to be sure. I told you I'd take care of her, but not yet. I'm tired of waiting. She's my wife. I love you. I want to be with you forever. I love you. Then do it, Larry. You must kill her. Someone called me Catherine. My name's Catherine. Catherine Alexander. the movie go? It was fine. And how was the director? So. You didn't like him? Uh, he was unsympathetic. Oh, that's a shame. No matter. He signed me for his next picture. Hey, that's good. All I had to say was, uh, Konstantin Damiris was a friend of mine. How could he refuse? Darling. I've got a welcome home gift for you. Oh, Gustav, you give me so much. Come on, open it. <laughs> what can it be? That director doesn't seem so unsympathetic now, does he? Gustav, I can explain this. Goodbye, my dear. Good luck with your new film. Although my advice is, check first. Find out if you're still going to be in it. Costa, please. Oh, and before you go, come here. You silly girl.
Oh, and leave the key to the apartment in the car with my secretary, would you? Take everything that's on the floor. Give it to the children's fund. Yes, Mr. Damiris. Sister Larissa called. She said it was important. Thank you. You say her nightmares never change? Until last night. She remembered her name. She called herself Catherine Alexander. Well, at least it is something after a year. Yeah. I wonder if we will ever discover who the poor child really is. Some doors are best left locked, sister. Catherine! Catherine! I'd like you to meet someone. This is Mr. Demiris. Sister Larissa tells me that you have started to regain your memory. Oh, Catherine, let me explain. This is Mr. Demiris. He is a good friend of the convent. And he has been generously helpful over the years. How do you do, sir? Let me see now. You arrived here a year ago? <laughs> As I remember, the nuns found you down there on the beach. But you had no idea how you got there. Or where you came from. No, and I still don't. Well, at least we have a name. That's a start. Sister, I think it is time for Miss Alexander to return to the outside world and start living her life again. Good. Then we are agreed. I'll send the car for you tomorrow. Goodbye, sister. Goodbye. Constantine de Maris. Oh, he is many people, Catherine. To some, he is one of the richest men in the world and a generous friend. But to others, he is a dangerous enemy. He's a friend to me. God bless you, child.
Something the matter, madam? I've seen this statue before. There's hundreds of them all over Greece. No, no, I've seen this one. Mr. Demiris will be waiting for you, madam. Catherine, welcome. Mr. Demiris. My friends call me Costa. I would like to think that I may count you among them. Have I been here before? No. If you had, I would certainly have remembered. But this room and the road coming up here, it all seems so familiar. Since you came to the convent, I've been learning about amnesia. I'm told that in the recovery process, the patient often feels like you do now. It's called déjà vu, a sense you've seen things before. The brain becomes confused. <laughs> I'm also told it's nothing to worry about. But I'm sure... Now, the first thing you're going to need are some clothes. Then we'll talk about a job and a place to live. Right now, I've arranged for you to stay here. But Mr. Demaris? Huh? Uh, Costa, I... We hardly know each other. Why are you doing all this? I'm now new for the best part of a year, although I kept myself out of sight. You're being so kind, I, I don't know what to say. Andreas! Yes, sir? Show Miss Alexander to one of our guest suites. My wife, Melina, will answer any questions you may have. I have a meeting to attend, but I'll see you later. <laughs> She's here at the villa. Stavros won't breathe a word. You sound very sure about that. Oh, yeah? Leave him to me. All that's bothering him is his conscience. Fine. Just as long as he doesn't bother us. <laughs> Keep an eye on Miss Alexander. Yes, sir. Don't let her out of your sight. Demiris has hired me to attend your wardrobe. Ah, yes. Good bone structure. Excellent figure. Get undressed, please. Oh, wait, I can't possibly afford to buy clothes like these. No one is asking you to, madame. Please. 
You wanted to see me, Leon? Sit down, Frederick. Thank you. <coughs> Not in here. Frederick, when I made you a full partner in this firm, I did so because you not only seemed a fine lawyer, but a man I could trust. You can, Leon. You can trust me. No, I can't. I haven't said anything to anybody. Because there's nothing to say. Right. Except that you don't act like it, Frederick. I've noticed, everyone has noticed for the past few months, that you seem to be falling apart. <sighs> I'm sorry, Leon. But it's hard. What is? Living with what we did. What did we do? Larry Douglas hmm? and Noel Page. We murdered them. No, we convicted them. Damn it, Leon, we treat them! We were supposed to defend them and we put them in front of a firing squad. You said you'd done a deal with the judge to get them off, but you hadn't. I watched them die. It was our fault, Leon. Now, you listen to me, Frederick. Sometimes justice is served in devious ways. They were guilty of being tried for the murder of Douglas's wife. They took her out to sea and drowned her. They knew it, we knew it. But the prosecution was botching the case. Defend them, yes, but not so they would get off scot-free. What we did was the only way to make sure that they would pay for their crime. <sighs> I'm sorry, Leon, but I can't see it that way. Oh, don't worry, I won't tell anyone. Indeed you won't, you pathetic little creep. And something else you won't do is walk around as if you had some kind of a guilty secret. You will pull yourself together, won't you? Won't you? Yes. Good. I'll get it for you. Madame is satisfied. Madame is very satisfied. But I don't deserve all this. It's too much. You have a saying in English, not to look a gift horse in the mouth. Can I help you, madam? I'd like to go into the city. Would you call a cab? No need to do that. I'll take you. That woman? I believe her name is Miss Alexander. I'm told she's from the convent at Ioannina. <laughs> she hardly looks like a nun. Mr. Demiris informed me she has been ill, madam. And my husband is offered to cure her. Oh, Costa, how considerate you are, especially to women half your age.
You have been here before. I have? Mrs. Douglas. What did you just call me? It's impossible. Mrs. Douglas, you... You are dead. Go away. Douglas? Go away. You okay, madam? to see you. What's the matter? I have sinned. Well, you want to confess? Oh. I'm beyond redemption, Father. No. No one is beyond God's forgiveness, my son. No. I have killed. I have taken a human life. I didn't mean to. I was led into it. I did it for the sake of money. Ambition. Just tell me what happened. A year ago, I was defending a man. He and his lover were accused of killing his wife. The case was going well. The evidence against him was only circumstantial. Then, the most powerful lawyer in Greece came to see me. Napoleon showed us. He was representing the woman. Yes, continue. Go ahead. He said he had persuaded his client to change her plea to guilty. He asked me to get mine to do the same. He said it was all right. He'd struck a deal with the judge. And they'd get off with a maybe suspended sentence. When I refused, he offered me a partnership in his firm. The idea of joining Napoleon Chotas. It was beyond my wildest dreams. And a full partner. I couldn't turn down a chance like that. I couldn't. But there was no deal. If they hadn't changed their pleas, they'd be alive today. The police never even found the body of the victim. Catherine Douglas. Father. I betrayed a client for a job. I can't live with guilt anymore. Six hundred and fifty thousand. Sixty. Mrs. Demiras, your husband, is over there. Mr. Lambert. Thank you. Six hundred and seventy thousand. Eighty. The bid is with you, sir. Oh, hello, my dear. Spiros, what are you doing here? Oh, just taking care of my sister Costa, if that is permitted. Going once at six hundred and eighty thousand dollars. You like that, do you? I wouldn't be bidding for it if I didn't. I always thought you had experts tell you what to buy. Going twice? Don't patronize me, Spiros. After all, the son of a fisherman is hardly expected to know anything about fine art. Final bid. 
690,000. 690,000. 700. 800,000. 900. 1 million. 1 million dollars. Going once at 1 million dollars. Going twice. Final bid. Sold to Mr. Spiros Lambrew for one million dollars. It isn't worth a penny over 700. <laughs> I know that cost that. But it's worth the extra just to take something as beautiful as that out of your hands. I recall you said that once about your sister when she married me. Yes. And if my sister's too proud to talk about it, all of Greece knows I was right. But enough, Spiros. Besides, my husband is consorting with convent girls now. I'm consorting with no one, my dear. And bringing them to live at her home. Convent girl. Well, at least that's more interesting than expensive whores. You're talking about a poor girl who's lost her memory. Sister Larissa has been caring for her for the past year. Please. You're breaking my heart with your sad story. Why does your sister think I sleep with every woman I meet? Because you do, Costa, you do. Why do you think Melina married me, Spiros? Against all your protests, why did she marry the son of an illiterate fisherman? Because she was young and foolish. And for many years, she failed to take my advice. Lambro, the reason why you will never be as rich as I am is that you are consistently wrong. Melina married me because she wanted to get away from the suffocating hypocrisy of your family dynasty. She made her own bed, Spiros. And if she finds that there is someone else lying in it now and then, I don't see what it has to do with you. Let me, it is. Let me spell it out for you. I love my sister very much. She's the most valued person in my life. Now, you carry on abusing her like that, and I swear to you, you won't live to regret it. I'm sorry, Mr. Demilus. I know how badly you wanted to buy back your painting. Don't worry, my friend. I got more than my money's worth. Have you been? It's all my fault. Catherine, I've been worried sick about you. I walked around the city. I met this woman, a fortune teller. You met what? She said she knew me, that I'd been there before, except... Except what? Except she called me Mrs. Douglas. <sighs> all afternoon, I've had the strangest feelings. Places I think I've been to before. I keep hearing voices in my head. And then this fortune teller. I recognized her shop. But why would she call me Mrs. Douglas? And why? Why what, Catherine? Why would she think that I was dead? Oh, Catherine. After that, I just walked around the streets for hours. 
I couldn't get a man's voice out of my brain. I kept hearing him say, Hey, honey, let's see if we're going to get rich. But his name, I just can't remember his now name. stop this. Listen to me. Whatever happened in the past is gone. The important thing for you now is to rebuild your life. How? Well, you must get out of Athens for a start. I've given a lot of thought to this, Catherine. I have offices in Amsterdam. You'd be an asset to them. It's a wonderful city. Just what you need to help get you back on your feet. I want to repay you for all your kindnesses, but... But I don't know if I'm, I'm ready for this kind of responsibility. <laughs> You'll get as much work as my people there think you can handle. You'll have a good salary, a nice place to live. Think about it, Catherine. Think about the alternative. To stay here and be tortured by memories. My dear Costa, everything would have been so much simpler had you believed that Frederick Stavros did not intend to reveal a little secret. However, since Stavros is dead, I cannot help but conclude that I will be next. So, I've taken the precaution of writing out the details of the part you and I played in the trial of Noel Page and Larry Douglas and have given them in a sealed envelope to the prosecuting attorney's office with instructions that it be opened in the event of my accidental death. Hello, Johnny. Hello, Georgius. Is my uncle in? Yes, he's in his room. Hello, Uncle Mikas. Ah, Georgius. Come in, come in, please sit down. Sit down. What's this? On a bottle again? Mama said I was to tell her if the rumors were true. Please be kind to me. Don't say anything. My mother always nagged me, even when we were children. What's the matter? You look sad. One of my favorite parishioners was killed the other evening. How? He was hit by a car. Easy come, easy go. The poor boy was deeply troubled, and I could do nothing for him. Such a fine young man in the prime of life. Trouble about what? Uh, Georgios, you know I can't tell you anything I hear in the confessional. I won't say anything, uncle. I see. You must have really liked him. Such a waste. Yeah. He had his whole life, whole career before him. What did he do? I mean, his job. He was a lawyer. Come on, uncle. He is dead. What difference does it make if you tell me? We 
Where are you going? I told you, I have an engagement. To Amsterdam? With your convent whore? Or maybe with your little film actress? Melina, it's with a man who wishes to lease some of our tankers. It's business, that's all. Business? Do you think that you can insult my intelligence like that? Stop it! Oh! Melina! Sainted mother, I'll strip the medias of every drachma he owns. I should have done it a long time ago. I'll make him regret every day he's ever spent in your life. Alexander, how do you do? My name is Evelyne Dubois. How do you do? And this is Kirk Reynolds, our legal expert. Hi. And this fashion victim is our computer wizard, Wim Van Dien. How do you do, Wim? And please, everyone, call me Catherine. Uh, Catherine the first real name was Marta Skowonski. She was born in 1684. She was a servant. She became Empress of Russia. In... Thank you, Wim. Thank you. Wim is rather shy. Well, Catherine, this is your office. You will start as my personal assistant. Do all your assistants get this treatment? <laughs> they come from Mr. Demiris. Welcome to Amsterdam, Catherine. Settle in and we'll put you to work. We really need you here. I'm here to answer whatever questions you might have, so shoot. I only just got here. I'm sure you can think of something. Like what? How about the one that goes, tell me, Kirk, are you married? It's a little too soon for questions. Yeah. Well, the answer, if you're interested, is no. was converted to an office building in 1907 when the Germans bombed Rotterdam and an air raid shelter was built in the cellar. This boiler looks as old as the building. Uh, it was installed in the 1950s and uh, it is known to be erratic and unstable. 
Wim? Hmm? You mean it is a safe? This, uh, this is a safety device installed to release excess steam, thus preventing the system from getting overheated. So it's safe? Yes. I'm so glad. And this, uh, this is the air raid shelter? In 1942, Germany invaded Holland. Much of the Jewish population were hidden uh, by their neighbors from the Nazis. Wim, without giving me the history of the Dutch beer industry, would you like to have a drink later? Yes. Do you like sports? What kind? Well, for instance, have you ever seen a baseball game? Baseball. A baseball is nine and a quarter inches in circumference. It is made of yarn wound around a hard rubber core. I'm not interested in the facts. But I am. I can tell you there are 20 employees in the DeBerris company in Amsterdam. I can tell you their salaries, their deductions, and their annual income numbers. But can you tell me if you like them? Do you dance, Wim? A, uh, a bar and a half of 4-4 four, four time completes one rhythmic unit of a foxtrot. Do you know a place where we could um, try out some of these fascinating theories? You want to go dancing? Yes. Do you want to go dancing with me? We're getting there, aren't we? Peter, come and have a drink. You look as if you need one. Whiskey. Why are you so nervous, Peter? Because I know better than to be too comfortable around you, Costa. You're not happy about our arrangement? Don't misunderstand, Costa. You have been very generous with me. I do hope that you feel that I've been some assistance. Sit down, Peter and that your career as a prosecuting attorney pleases you. Yes, it has been very beneficial. I don't want to seem ungrateful. It's just... Oh, I understand, of course. It's just that you hesitate to break the trust of your office. Let's not waste time. I am responsible for your election and I can have you removed. The only trust you need to protect is mine. Yes, sir. Did you bring the envelope that you received from Leon Chotas? Yes, sir. Good. Now hand it to me, Peter. And we will put all this behind us. for a drink to toast your future success.
Mr. Demirez? Costa. I, sorry, I mean Costa. <laughs> I'm driving in from the airport in Amsterdam. I was wondering whether you'd be willing to have dinner with me tonight. I'd love to. Good. Looking forward to it. I'll pick you up, say, uh, 8 o'clock. My spies tell me that you have become friendly with my international lawyer, Kirk Reynolds. Mr. Reynolds has been very kind to me, it's true. Everyone's gone out of their way. So you're enjoying yourself? Yes, I am. And learning quite a lot as well. And your mysterious past? Has anything more come to light? No. And actually, I'm quite content to leave it that way. I owe so much to your kindness. You have no idea how pleased I am to hear you say so. Cheers. Cheers. Come up for a night cab. Thank you. Sometime soon. Right now I'm a little tired. Do you mind? It's been wonderful to see you again, Costa. I'm glad we could spend some time together. We'll do it again. I'd like that. Swim. Wonderful idea. It's a perfect day for it. Oh, well. 
my wife might see us. <sighs> it's because Dao might see us, Jerry. Oh. <sighs> Makes it exciting, doesn't it? Why don't you come in? Later. <laughs> I never loved anyone as I loved you, Noel. Excuse me, sir. This is your hotel. Yes, thank you, Doctor. Well, just let my sister know that I called. Thanks. Thank you. Morning, Georgius. Good morning, Claire. Is the boss in? Yes, why? Mm, just checking. Yes. Mr. Lambrou, excuse me. My name is Georgius Lato. I work in your mail room. Well? Sir, I have information. Who let you in here? It concerns Constantin Demiris. And what makes you think I'd be interested? Sir, there's no secret that you and him are, well, let's say, you have this thing going, this vendetta. You're wasting my time. Sir, I think I know how we can put him in a jail. You have 30 seconds. The trial last year. American and a French woman, Noel Page. Do you remember it, sir? Yes, I remember. Noel Page was, let's say, a friend of Mr. Demiris. 10 seconds. I like reading about trials. It's a hobby of mine. And this one had me wondering. I couldn't figure out how she can afford the most expensive lawyer in Greece, Napoleon Chotas. Because Mr. Demiris paid his bill. Right. I couldn't figure out why he persuaded Noel Page to change her plea to guilty. I mean, the defense had everything going for them. It wasn't even a body. I have no idea why he did it. I do. Really? Yes. Mr. Demiris told him to. How do you know? He got Chotas to tell a woman that he'd done a deal with a judge. All she had to do was to change her plea. But there was no deal. <laughs> You've got quite a fanciful imagination. No, sir. But what I do have is an uncle who is a priest. And he took a confession from the other lawyer in a case. Stavros. Stavros confessed and said there was no deal? Yes, sir. And next day he was killed in a hit and run accident. Chad is also dead. House burned down. Yes, sir. This uncle of yours, would he be prepared to swear to what he'd heard? Maybe. And what does this maybe mean? It means maybe I can persuade him. Now when Stavros is dead, it's easier for him to talk about a confession. And who knows? If you succeed, maybe there'll be something in it for you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I'm going skiing next week. San Moritz, why don't you come? Kirk, well, I... don't get excited. I'll book two rooms. Different floors, if you like. Different hotels. Different towns, if you insist. I don't think I've ever been skiing. You don't think? Aren't you sure? I'm sure you're an Olympic champion. Well, come join me and find out. 
What do you say? I'll even throw in some free lessons. Just friends. Scouts on it. transport problems these days. Lousy. Drugs enforcement, cops everywhere. Haven't moved a thing in months. Why don't you go see the Amiris? <laughs> He's thrown me out more times than you have. You may find he'll change his mind. Why would you want to do that? Because I'm going to give you three names. Noel Page, Napoleon Chotas, and Frederick Stavros. What are they supposed to do? Get his attention. And while he's listening, you tell him this. Who told you this? A member of the family filled me in. Your family. Now, Costa, may I call you Costa? Costa, that's what uh, your friends call you. Something tells me we're going to be very good friends. You see, good friends, they don't rat on each other. Uh, you help me, and I'll um, forget I ever heard a word about an oil page and the rest. She must have been quite abroad, eh? Get to the point. I want to use one of your ships for a little um, delivery I need to make. And that's being such good friends, I'm sure uh, you won't even charge me for the cargo. You're making a serious error. I don't respond well to blackmail. Now get out or I'll call the police. <laughs> call them. I'm sure they'll be very interested to hear how you treat your friends. Noel and Larry in court. It's a killer story, eh? <laughs> Now you have ten seconds to decide whether we are partners or I walk out. This is a one-time trip only, right? Sure, anything you say. My yacht leaves for Italy next week. Maybe we can find room for you and your merchandise. Glad you could oblige a friend, Costa. Oh, just one thing. I want you to come along, just for the ride. Why? Hey, Costa, it's me, Tony Rizzoli. I'm dry behind the ears now. You think uh, I want to go sailing straight into the arms of the Italian narcs? You're quite a man, Mr. Rizzoli. <laughs> I love you too, Pops. Ciao. Costa, it's a nice day for a cruise. I think that when we're safe ashore. Hey, I've done my homework. I know your ships go in and out, and uh, the narc's got Don Bat and I. You know something, Costa? I might make this a regular assignment. <laughs> The Miris yacht sailed an hour ago. Good. Was he on board? Yes. Thank you. Oh, by the way, keep in the Italian police. <laughs> Can't you keep these apes under control? <laughs> They're just letting off steam. Just relax, Costa. You're gonna get an ulcer.
Hey, what's this gonna do to us, Tony? Hello, Spiros. You look surprised to see me. No, I... I just dropped by to say thank you. For what? For the good customer you sent me, Tony Rizzoli. He said we would do a lot of business together. The only snag is... Tony Rizzoli is no longer with us. A tragic accident. Still, it was the thought that counts. I will do the same for you one day. Friends, right? I'd hate to see you break your Boy Scout oath. I have a confession. You were never a Boy Scout. You knew you came with me anyway. I'm shocked. <laughs> Where were we? Uh, you were just telling me not to lean back. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm a bit drunk. Yeah, it's the altitude. I thought gentlemen never took advantage of ladies in this condition. A, I'm not taking advantage of you, and B, I've never professed to be a gentleman. Where does that leave us? Back where we started, just friends. You are a friend, Kirk. A real one. Admit it. Admit what? You have skied before. You were quite good out there today. Well, I honestly don't know if I have or I haven't. I don't understand. <laughs> of course you don't. I think it's time I explained. And that's all you know, your name, Catherine Alexander. Not quite. The plot thickens, as they say. <laughs> what? Oh, there was a woman in Athens, a fortune teller. Only she called me Catherine Douglas. Douglas? Like the fir tree. Thanks for a wonderful time. Sleep tight. Lesson two tomorrow, how to stop. Operator, I want the number of the Ministry of Justice in Athens, Greece. Yes, sir. One moment, please. Can I get you anything? Oh, 
Melina, you fell. It wasn't my fault. I know. But things are different now. How? How are they different? I had a long time to think in the hospital. I've been clinging on to a marriage that died a long time ago. That is your brother talking. I'm leaving you, Costa. And there's no point in arguing. My mind is made up. Where are you going? Excuse me, sir. It's the prosecuting attorney's office. Not oh. now, not now. Mr. Demonita stressed it is very urgent. Thank you, Andreas. Yes? Yes, Peter, what is it? I received a call from one of your employees this morning. A lawyer named Kirk Reynolds. He was asking questions about the murder trial of Catherine Douglas. He asked about Catherine Douglas? What did you tell him? I put him off. I said I'd have one of my assistants get back to him. Where's Reynolds now? Palace Hotel in St. Moritz. All right, Peter. Do nothing more. I will handle the St. Moritz situation in my own way. For you, sir. Will you read it for me, please? Your representative has arrived in Summeritz. Contract to be executed tomorrow. Thank you. What's your favorite number, my dear? 46. How about your favorite color? And please don't tell me green. Red. Put it all on red, please. Okay. Hey. Credit my account and give this charming young lady the winning. But it's over 50,000, sir. So it is. Morning. Is it? Those falls yesterday caught up with me. Ouch. Would you be devastated if I didn't go up with you today? Kirk? I was going to try the Grisha run. It's a bit tricky. Is anything the matter? No. Has Mr. Reynolds come back yet? No, ma'am. May I have my key? Here, ma'am. Thank you. You're welcome.
I'd like to settle Mr. Reynolds' bill as well. Madam, I'm sorry to hear about Mr. Reynolds. Thank you. Yes, Clea. What do you mean, they won't leave their name? Well, you know what to do with prank calls. What is this? He said what? All right, I'll speak to him. Yes, hello, this is Spiris Lumbro. Ask Peter de Monides what he did with the confession of Napoleon Jotas. Who is this? Who was that? I don't know. Well, what did he say? Ask Peter de Monides what he did with the confession of Napoleon Chotas. What does that mean? I have no idea. Peter de Monides is the prosecuting attorney. Yes. He caught Costa the other night. Do you know why? I couldn't hear it all. But they were talking about Catherine Douglas and the St. Moritz. Catherine Douglas? It brought up all the memories of that awful scandal and that French woman that Costa became so infatuated with. Now, Paige. She was executed because Chotas persuaded her to plead guilty. I never understood why she changed her plea. It never made sense. Then why don't you ask your husband? He leaned on Chotas to do his dirty work. Oh, Chotas. The fire in his house was so intense that they could never identify his body. Whoever it was, we just called and knew that Chotas left a confession with the prosecuting attorney. But what, what are you going to do? I made a promise to your husband a little while ago. This time I intend to keep it. What promise? A promise that I was going to have the last laugh. Yes, clear. Get me the prosecuting attorney, Peter Demonidis.
Johnny, it's me! Hello. Costa? My memory. The pieces are all slowly falling into place. I had a husband named Larry and, uh, and something about a woman named Noel. It's all coming back. I just couldn't wait to tell you. Oh, that's, uh, that's amazing news, Catherine. I'm so happy for you. Where is he, Costa? Where's Larry? I'm sorry to tell you that he's dead, Catherine. And so is Noel. They were executed for your murder. I don't understand. Well, you see, no one knew you were alive in the convent. Oh, my God. Yes, I know, Catherine. It was... It was horrible. But now you must put the past behind you. Look, get a little bit of rest. We'll talk some more in the morning. Oh, Catherine. I tried so hard to avoid this moment. You were satisfied with the St. Moritz contract? Yes. Where is the next target located? Amsterdam. The details are in the case. Very well. Like Reynolds, 
which had looked like an accident. But this time, the body must be unrecognizable. Understood. As usual, I will choose those to carry out the assignment. You will arrange for them to obtain access to the target. Time made a move, Alina. Don't think about it, just do it. I can't. We've been through this before. First you say you want to leave Costa, then you change your mind. What more must he do to you? How much more humiliation must you go through? Face it, Malina, you married a bastard. It wasn't always like this. Are you coming or not? When we were young, he was so exciting. He was born in the Gata and he will die in one. I can never understand what you saw in him. You know nothing about love, Spiros. Nothing. You either come with me now, or you stay here with a man you'll never be able to change. I think you have your answer, Spiros. Damn you, them idiots. I should have killed me. I think you said that once. Then you tried to ruin me. But that didn't quite work either, did it? Since I failed to sail into the arms of the Italian customs. 
What are you saying, Costa? I'm saying that your brother is a bungling fool who's over his head in very deep water. Are you seriously intending to stay with this vulgar fisherman's bastard? You can insult me all you like, Spiros. But don't ever, ever speak about my father! You killed your whore, you killed her lover. You killed their lawyers you paid to betray them. Who's left the Miris? How many more will have to die before you feel safe? Thank you for staying. I might be making the biggest mistake of my life. But I must try. One final time. Acosta. How did we end up like this? This is not the end. It's a new beginning. Give me the chance to make up for all the wrong I've done, Melina. Why do good people have to die? Kirk was the kindest man I ever knew. Six six two four six zero. What's that? It's his um, telephone number. His social security number is uh, two four zero nine nine. No numbers when not now. He died because he knew me. The cause of death was from a fracture of Larry, the spinal Noel column. Larry, Noel Page. Following a massive fall. And now Kirk. Why did they all have to die? The average expectation of life is 75 for I have remembered thoughts. Memories of death. I, I think I'm going mad. What's this? Dr. Alan Hamilton? Wim? See Dr. Hamilton. My name is Catherine Alexander. I'm uh, afraid I'm a little late. Oh, that's perfectly right, Miss Alexander. Miss Alexander. Hello. I'm Alan Hamilton. I understand you're a friend of Wim Van Dien. We work together. At the Hellenic Trade Corporation. How do you know Wim? I helped him get his job. Oh, I see. By now, you probably realize that Wim has a minor brain disorder. He's got an excellent mind, capable of absorbing an enormous amount of facts and figures. And his grasp on mathematics is unique. But there is a uh, downside to it. He's unable to relate to people socially. He came to me when he was desperate for work. He couldn't manage to hold on to anything more than a week. So I placed him in your firm. They leave him alone. He gets on with his work. Why don't you sit down? Listen, I'm one of the few people that Wim likes and trusts. You seem to be another. He's told me a great deal about you. 
Look, I've changed my mind. I don't really need this appointment. Good Lord. I never realized how good I really am. Excuse me? Well, you've been in my office for under two minutes, and already you're feeling better. It's just that I... I don't want to waste your time, Doctor. Don't worry about that. I hear you've been through a lot lately. What do you know about it? Wim mentioned Samaritz. Why doesn't everyone just leave me alone? Oh, God. I feel so... so lost. Why don't we see if we can find you? I would like you to meet Atana. I hear we're going to be working together. Mm. She's been sent from the Greek office to work for you, not with you. I wish to serve you in any way I can, Ms. Alexander. Well, the first thing you can do for me is call me Catherine. I already explained to Atana what the word gopher means in English. I don't need a gopher. What I need is a companion. I leave the two of you to sort it out. Ms. Alexander, Catherine, I know what you are thinking. What am I thinking? You are saying, who is this young girl they sent me? What do I need her for? I'm thinking nothing of the sort. Well, I would be if I were you. What did head office tell you? They say you have too much work. How considerate of them. But if it is not so, then I go back to Athens on first flight. Be careful, you might talk yourself out of a job. I wish to work with friends. I do not wish to work with enemies. I appreciate your honesty. And I would like someone to give me a hand. I can't think of anyone better than you. <laughs> Hello, Wim. I want to thank you. What for? I want to see Dr. Hamilton. But what's more to the point, I'm going to see him again. Yeah. Well, in psychiatric social readjustment, at the rating scale of the death of a spouse is 100. Divorce is 73. Marital separation from mate is uh, 65. And jail is 63. What's the rating scale for memory loss? Uh, I have insufficient data to calibrate that figure. I like Dr. Hamilton. Yeah. How long has he been married? Married? There's a, there's a photograph on his desk, a woman and two children. <sighs> Forget it, it's a joke. <sighs> you must be careful. Well, that was hardly my fault. Be careful. Careful of what? Seventy-five um, percent of all accidents occur within the home or the uh, workplace. Catherine, this is Costa. I'm sending over three of my senior men. I want them to study our operations in Amsterdam. And how may I help you? Well, would you look after them for me? You know, show them around, that sort of thing. Of course, I'd be delighted. Leave them to me. Thank you, Catherine. No, I should thank you. Why? Well, isn't this your way of getting me out and about? <laughs> well, partly. Goodbye, Catherine. <laughs> ah, Melina. Do you mind if I ask three men from the office to dinner? You don't usually ask me things like that. I would be delighted if you would act as hostess. You don't usually ask me things like that either. Not for a long time. I know. Uh, 
I have strayed too far and been gone too long. It has been my loss, my dear. Will you do it? Of course. Gentlemen, may your visit to Amsterdam be profitable. To success. And hard work. Ah, I knew there was a catch. Get to know the city. And despite what you have heard, you really can eat very well there. The only way to eat well in Amsterdam is to have salmon and herring. <laughs> <laughs> As a Frenchman, Eve, you are naturally prejudiced when it comes to food. Ah. Italians have been known to have a fine palate as well. I understand that Madame Matusi will not be with you on this trip, Senor. Ah, my wife, Madame, is like the finest Italian wine. She does not travel well. I'm told there's an American woman working there. That is correct, Jerry. Her name is Catherine. She is even now working on a schedule to make sure that none of you get a moment's rest. You think of everything, sir. <laughs> Why don't we have our coffee on the terrace? That's a wonderful idea, gentlemen. Good night. I'm sure you'll take care of everything that needs to be done. Have a nightcap on the terrace. Gentlemen, my name's Catherine Alexander. Welcome to Amsterdam. Thank you. Jerry Haley. Yves Renard. Dino Matus. Jude Bossa, what are you doing? I'm so sorry. Leave them alone. Stand away. Joseph. It was just an accident, monsieur. Natalia, why don't you find some coffee? Yes, of course. Mr. Demiris thinks very highly of you. Well, that's very flattering. He says you are going to take a good care of us. I'm going to try, Signor Matusi. Ah, please. Do call me Dino. <laughs> I have a present. Oh, that's most thoughtful of you, Signor Matusi. Dino. <laughs> Thank you. Well, after we have some coffee, I'm going to introduce you all to some of the staff. Excuse me. Do you have any decaf? Pardon? Decaffeinated. No, I'm sorry. No, pass. Do you have espresso? I'm afraid not. No, no thank you. I've had instant coffee before. Once. Good luck, Catherine. I'd like to introduce you all to Wim Van Dien. He takes care of all our financial transactions. Wim, these are the gentlemen Mr. Damaris sent from Greece. Greece has a population of 10,066,000. Guy's weird. When you get to know him better, you'll find he's a little odd, but a brilliant statistician. Mm -hmm. Evelyn, may I introduce you to... I'm Jerry Haley. Hello. Evelyn now. Bonjour. Dino Matusi. Hello. Oh. A problem? Three, to be precise. What am I going to do with them in the evenings? I am sure you will handle it with your customary flair. I don't suppose you'd like to help me out. <laughs> ah, pity. I always develop a very bad headache at 6 o'clock every night. Mm. Signor Matusi. I have for you a very important question. What is it? Are you married? Uh, no. Good.
Oh, sorry. A person asleep is a person relaxed. I'm sure some experts said that sometime. Been acting as a tour guide for some visiting firemen. Well, keeping busy is exactly what you should do. That's what Mr. Demiris figured. Miss Alexander, do you mind if I call you Catherine? No. I'm Alan. How long have you been working for Constantine Demiris? Mm, not long. He seems to be a very sympathetic employer. He brought me back to life. Literally. What are you thinking about? My husband worked for him, too, but he died. How? Huh? Everyone I know dies. That thought never leaves my head. I work. I try to keep occupied so as not to think about it. But in the end, I can never forget. We often blame ourselves for things that happen to other people. It's, it's like I'm some kind of bad luck charm. I'm afraid I have a relationship with another man. After Larry and Kirk. If I didn't and something happened. Yes. We're only responsible for our own destiny. No one else's. People die for all sorts of reasons. Illness, accidents. None of them are our fault. Take a bit of getting used to. We'll get used to it together. Good evening, my dear. I thought we would go to Vienna for a few days. Do a little shopping, spend some time alone. What do you say? What is it? Has Spiros been bothering you again? Spiros told me that uh, you arranged for the execution of the pilot of yours, the American and his girlfriend. Did he say why I would do such a thing? I knew that she was one of your women. Melina, I thought we were trying to start over. Why drag up the past? He said that you could not bear that a mistress of yours would take another lover. So I had them killed. Don't misunderstand me. I don't give a damn about either of them. Then why all these questions? He said you also had the two lawyers murdered. Chotas and the other man. Because they could testify against you. <laughs> what else does your brother accuse me of? Maybe he thinks I killed Kennedy, too. That woman that you brought here from the convent. The one you sent to Amsterdam. What about her? That was Catherine Douglas, wasn't it? The one they were supposed to have drowned. Answer me, Costa. I suppose this is yet another of your brother's crazy fantasies. She is the one person left alive who could destroy you. That's so, isn't it? If you believe him, yes. And what will you do about her? Do? Nothing. Why should I do anything about the poor girl? Except give her work to help her get over a terrible experience? Those three men you sent to Amsterdam. Well, what about them? One of them is going to kill her, aren't they? I'm sure you'll do what needs to be done. That's what you said. I heard you. How could you? A completely innocent woman. You will never understand me, Melina. What makes me tick? Never. How could you? You have always known what it is to be wealthy, comfortable, to have a good position in the world. You never had to go hungry. To watch your parents die before their time, worn out by poverty. Well, I have. I got out of it by hard work. It wasn't luck. It wasn't good fortune. It was sheer hard 
And yes, sometimes ruthless work. I built our life all by myself, from nothing. We gave millions away to charity, not your money, but mine. For every fortune I have made, I have given away another. Thousands of people rely on me for their living, and I'm conscious of my responsibility to them all. That means that if someone comes along to threaten my life, to threaten all the good I do with the wealth I create, I don't care if it's your brother, a woman, a blackmailing lawyer. I don't care if they're only innocent bystanders. If they wreck everything, then they will be removed. You mean killed? I said removed, Melina. They will be put where they can do no more damage. You, my dear, you have a choice. To listen to your brother's crazy accusations, or you can listen to me. Me to a girl and a friendly drink. Sure. I know just the place. You'll feel right at home there. Good. This is not exactly what I had in mind. What in Amsterdam do as the Dutch do. You really like it here, don't you? Yes, I do. Where are you from in the States? I don't remember. What? <laughs> You're from California. I read your file. What else did you read? Your father was in oil, your grandfather was a judge, and you spent three years in a juvenile detention center for auto theft and burglary. Oh, you read the confidential file. Costa de Maris must see something else in you besides being the black sheep of the family. I guess he does. Mr. Haley, tell me, what exactly do you do for the company? I am what they call a troubleshooter. Oh, do you start trouble, or do you try to stop it? Whatever the boss wants. You know, I always wanted to be on stage doing Shakespeare. Hamlet is my favorite. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps on this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time. <laughs> What are you laughing at? I have done some acting in my day. Not Hamlet, you haven't. And how do you know? Because that's Macbeth. Well, you've done one Shakespeare play. You've done them all. <laughs> it's getting kind of late. Come on. This is the only time that you have not been swamped with people since I came to town. Jerry Haley, you're a strange one. Really? It's like you're a puzzle, and I'm missing a piece. I'm not that hard to figure out. Look, Catherine, I have enjoyed being with you this evening. And I had to get away from those other two bozos. I like them. Well, you have to say that. Let's stand here for a minute. Hey, you two. No, no, in the safe area. Can I give you some directions? Sorry, officer. We didn't know. Well, I'll stay in a bright lit area if it were you. So, if you know what I mean. Come on, honey. This nice gentleman trying to give us a hand. Let's go find someplace else. I really have to work early tomorrow. Perhaps some other time. Anything you want. Taxi! Melina, just calm down. He's going to kill her, Spiros. An innocent woman. I can't turn away from it anymore. 
If I don't do something, then I will be just as responsible for whatever happens to that poor girl. I mean, I told you what he was like. You refused to believe me. I'm frightened. I've never been so scared. I know that Cost has done some, some terrible things in the past. But, but this is evil. Come here, sister. I'll just leave it. Well, listen, Malini, you just have to watch your step. By the way, thank you very much for the chocolates. What are you talking about? Spiros. Spiros! Leave us. Look, I'm fine. Sorry, do you have any doubts about your husband? No. This is the last straw, Melina. I swear I'm going to kill him. No, you're not, Spiros. Because he's far too clever for you. You've always thought that, haven't you? Clever Costas, poor dumb Spiros. You will do nothing, my dear brother. Because I am going to kill him. In my own way. And in my own time. Alexander, but she is not in the building. Would you take it, please? Who is speaking, please? Oh, <coughs> Wim. My, uh, my, <coughs> my name is Wim. Oh, yes, Wim. Uh, we've met. This is Mrs. Demiris. I have a very important message for Catherine Alexander. You must give it to her. Athens has a, uh, a population of three million. Oh, for God's sakes. This is a matter of life and death. The average expectation of life is 75.2. One of the men that my husband sent from Athens is going to try to kill her. Tell her to stay away from them. Please, you must help her. Do you understand? We're on vacation by the sea. I feel ill. Something I've eaten. Larry says go to bed. I wake up. A terrible storm, terrible noise. It's a storm. The wind's banging the shutters. I get up to look for Larry. He's with Noel. Kill her. Kill her now. They're talking about me. I run. I run to the water. Larry's running after me. Catherine, Catherine, where are you? Into the boat. I'm going over. Tell me what you see, Catherine. What do you see? Drowning. Water. I'm going down. Dying. I'm going to die. Just like Larry wants. Calm. The water's gone. I feel the sun. People. Two women. Nuns. Rest. Rest. Good. I'm going to bring you forward now, Catherine. I'm going to bring you forward to Kirk. Kirk. Nice man. But I'm not ready yet, not after Larry. He's kind, friend. Let's go skiing. Just friends. Skiing. Happy. It's a long time since I've been so relaxed. What? What do you mean there's been an accident? Oh, my God, he's dead. Kirk's dead. It's all right. Rest a while. It's OK.
My name is Catherine Alexander. But it's not as simple as that. A woman in Athens called me Catherine Douglas. Who are you talking to now, Catherine? Kirk. What did you say? Douglas. Like the fir tree. And what does he say to that? He looks puzzled, as if he's heard the name before. No. It's impossible. He's dead. Friends. I look around his room. His clothes are lying there. Book. He's written a phone number. What phone number? My bell, please. And I'd like to settle Mr. Reynolds' bill. I'm so sorry to hear about Mr. Reynolds, ma'am. It'll be on the bill. Was I asleep? Yes. I put you under hypnosis. Don't you remember? Oh, yes, I do. Catherine. Larry was trying to kill you, he and the woman Noelle. But it wasn't your fault that Larry died. And it wasn't your fault that they didn't know you were still alive. Then we spoke about Kirk. He did die skiing, except I don't think it was an accident. Why? A couple of days ago, I called the Swiss police. They said that someone must have deliberately removed the avalanche warning. It couldn't have fallen down by mistake. Why would anyone want to kill him? You said that you told him your real name was Catherine Douglas. Yes. You said he seemed puzzled, as if that name meant something. You're right, I'd forgotten that. You also said that you paid his hotel bill. Yes, I did. Can you find it? Uh, yes, but why? While you were under, you said you saw a phone number he'd written on a pad. He called someone, and I want to know who that was. He needed to phone someone to jog his memory about Catherine Douglas. I'm sorry. I guess that's what they call malpractice. Or divorce. Divorce? What gave you the idea that I was married? The photograph. That's my sister. Your sister? Come on. Let's go find that hotel bill. Here it is. Phone calls. That's simple. There's only one. Where's your directory? Look up international dialing codes. He phoned a number starting with a 30 followed by a 1. 30 is for Greece, and 1 is Athens. He spoke to someone in Athens on April 14th at 9 a.m. The day after I told him about being called Catherine Douglas. The day he died. I'll hold on to this. You're really enjoying this, aren't you? Well, sometimes my job is no different from detective work. All a psychiatrist does is help uncover clues to his patient's problem. 
Yeah. I am enjoying this. Hello? Yes, Monsieur Renard. Oh, yes, I can. 11 o'clock, your hotel. Another one of your visiting firemen? Mm -hmm. Monsieur Renard is a museum enthusiast. Guess where I'm going to be all day tomorrow. This is an exhibit of Roman sculpture from the third century AD. Compared to the exhibition in Le Louvre, this is insignificant. It's a waste of time. Let's see some of the countryside where we can be off the beaten track. Monsieur Renard, do they have windmills in France? They don't need them. Holland has some interesting sites. Yes, if you like dikes. I'd like to go somewhere I can think in peace and quiet. This is all very dreary. Monsieur Renard, I've given up my weekend to entertain you. I think the least you could do is uh, show a little civility. I am sure you are being very well paid for your work. Goodbye. Okay, okay, I am sorry. You are right. I am rude. Please forgive me. Fine, let's start over. So, where are these famous windmills? Coming right up. Let's go up. I don't like heights. That's all in the imagination. Are you cold? I'm all right. There's the nest of a bird there. Look. Here, take my hand. Hell. What are you afraid of? photograph support one day. Well, that can be arranged. Perhaps next week, early one morning. As you wish. Yes. Of course. Thank you. After all, Monsieur Renard, I am being well paid. Catherine, prego, we have dinner tonight. 
I have a guide to the finest restaurants in Amsterdam. Oh, I am busy tonight, Dino. Why don't you take a tanner? Catherine, how can you do this to me? Time for a headache, dear? Catherine, don't! A tanner. Who am I speaking to? The Ministry of Justice. The Ministry of Justice. Yes, well, this is Dr. Alan Hamilton. I'm calling from Holland, Amsterdam. How may I help you? I'd like to speak to somebody in charge. Ah, Costa, could you help me cut this string? I, I can't seem to do it. Well, of course you can't. Don't you know better than to hold a knife by the blade? Thank you. I bought this today. Look. Costa, what do you think? Very nice. Haven't you forgotten something? Melina, the package! Who do you want protection from, Mr. Miris? My husband. He's a powerful man. It will be difficult. I intend to divorce him. And he has said that he will kill me if I go through with it. The money is immaterial. You charge whatever you like. But starting next week, I want action. Very well. Ah, Costa has gone under a bus. No. He wants a truce. Spiros, it's time for all of us to put aside our grievances. Now, if we can work together, our family will be the most powerful shipping owners in the whole world. This is some kind of trick. I don't believe him. No. No, I believe him this time. He wants to make peace in the family. Spiros, he wants to meet you at your fishing lodge this afternoon. I don't know. Besides, it's so far away. I have a busy day. Do it. Oh, Spiros, please. Please, Spiros, do it for me. I'm so tired of this endless feuding. I do it for you. Goodbye, Spiros. Do you have a telephone? Then? Yes, of course. Yes? Costa? 
I've just spoken to Spiros. And he says that this fighting must end. And he wants to make peace. When I'm through with him, he'll have all the peace he wants. He's willing to sell you his fleet. <laughs> that's impossible. No. No, that's how serious he is, my darling. He really wants to quit. He's had enough, Costa. He wants you to meet him at his lodge at Agro-Corinth this afternoon at 3. I smell a whole army of rats. Please meet him. Costa, just do it for me. I've never begged you for anything before, but I am begging you now. Very well. Thank you, my dear. Goodbye, Costa. Bye. Shall we go inside? No. Let's walk. I want this madness to end, Costa. I agree. Well, now, how many ships do you have these days? What? I'll buy them all. At the right price, of course. <laughs> you buy my ships. Isn't that the deal? Are you crazy? Isn't that why I'm here? We are having this meeting because you said you wanted a truce. I what? Who told you that? My sister. Melina told me you wanted out and were willing to sell me your entire fleet. No, Costa. No, my mind is made up. No, I intend to go through with the divorce, and I intend to make it as messy as possible. Bored. Don't frighten me, Costa. I'm not frightened by you anymore. No. No, what good would talking do? All right. All right, I'll meet you at the beach house in an hour. Andreas. Yes, madam. I'm going to meet my husband at the beach house. If I'm not back by six o'clock, I want you to call the police. Do you understand? But, madam, if I may say... You may not.
Yes. This was delivered by hand. Thank you. My dearest brother, by the time you read this, the matter of Costa will be resolved. You have only one thing to do. Deny you met him at your lodge. I love you. Your devoted sister, Melina. Sir, these two gentlemen are from the police. What is it? Mr. Demiris, we have some terrible news. Demiris. Mr. Demiris, I'm Police Lieutenant Theophilos. Please accept my deepest sympathy. I don't understand. I'm afraid your wife was killed with this knife. It looks like she put up a hell of a fight. Who was it? A thief? That's what you are trying to find out, sir. This swimming trunks have your initials. Yes, they're mine. I haven't used them here in years. I swim in the pool at the villa. We found them stuffed in the closet. Could you tell me how they got there and why they are... why they are wet and covered in blood? Of course I can't. What are you implying? We found that button under the rug. We took the liberty of checking your clothes in the house. A jacket has a button missing from the cuff. I can't be bothered with you. I want to speak to Peter Demonides, the prosecuting attorney. All in good time. All in good time. Melina Lav Costa. Does this belong to your wife? Yes, but... Uh... It was smashed in struggle at 3 o'clock. Could you tell me, where have you been this afternoon at 3 o'clock? This afternoon? Yes. I was at Acro Corinth, three hours from here. Ask my brother-in-law I was with him. Is it true, Miss Lambrou? It is not. I haven't seen this man a long time, Lieutenant. I worshipped my sister, and he consistently abused her throughout their marriage. And now this. We would like to come with us, sir, to check the knife for a fingerprints.
here, quickly. Come with me. Where are we going? Matosi was sent to kill you. What? Why do I come down here? He won't find us in the basement. Atana, why was Matosi going to kill me? There's something wrong with the boiler. It's overheating. Don't move. My job. Catherine! Probability of death by assassination, 98%. Sorry, Catherine, but the contract insisted on no recognition. So, when it reaches the red zone, you are dead. Matusi was nothing. Nothing more than an oversexed Italian. He was a red herring like the others. Demires thought his wife might try to interfere. That is why he sent them. To keep the attention of me. Goodbye, Catherine. Pity. I really did like you. What do you mean you don't know where she is? He says they were in the copying room. Then someone hit him, and when he came to, she was gone. Who hit him? A ton of savage. How do you know? No records, no file, no data. We'll search the building. Wim, you start from the top, I'll start from below. Over there, he'll this fix you up. Final boarding call for KLM flight number 887, service to Bangkok. Now boarding from gate 16. Sorry about this. We have to process every ticket by hand, I'm afraid. You are dead! That's the second time someone's made that mistake.
low cost. I'm not a ghost, Costa. The fire you started in my house killed my butler. I got out with my life, but as you can see, not altogether whole. Leon, I... I... I was waiting for my confession to the prosecuting attorney to come out. When it didn't, I realized he was in your pocket. I didn't kill Melina. I know. She killed herself in order to set me up. <laughs> Poetic justice, Costa. I suppose so. But I didn't come here to gloat. Why did you come, Leon? I came to save you. Just what makes you think I put my life in your hands? What do you have to lose? Besides, Costa, have I ever let you down? No, Leon. You haven't. What do you want from me? Your money. <laughs> How much of my money? All of it, Costa. Please describe what you saw on entering the Demiris Beach House, Lieutenant. The furniture was overturned. Pictures ripped from the walls. It looked like a terrific fight had taken place. Is this the knife you found covered in blood? Yes, it is. What type was the blood? Type B. What blood group was the victim? B. Did you find any fingerprints on the knife, Lieutenant? Yes, we did. Whose were they? The prints on the handle were those of the accused. Sir? Would you describe him as a big man? Powerful? Yes, sir. Not the sort of person who'd have to tear a room apart in order to kill his wife. Objection. Sustained. Don't lead the witness. Withdrawn. Now, Lieutenant, would you call the defendant an intelligent man? Yes, sir. Don't get to be as rich as he is, unless you're pretty smart. Quite. So, the interesting question is, why would an intelligent man leave a bloodstained knife and swimming shorts at the scene of his crime and a button which he didn't notice missing from his coat? He would have to be not only monumentally stupid, but blind as well. Agreed. Your card was found at the Demiris Beach House. Mrs. Demiris took one when she came to see me. Why would she do that? She already had your number. I don't know. Maybe she wanted to recommend me to her friends. Uh, it's a good thing she didn't. I don't know what you mean. I mean, you're not very good, are you? I've been in business 15 years, and I've had no complaints. You were hired to provide protection for Mrs. Demiris. Where were your men when she was murdered? I hadn't sent them yet. You hadn't? Why on earth not? She didn't want me to start till next week. Is that so? <laughs> Makes one wonder how frightened Mrs. Demiris really was, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs>
she said she was going to meet her husband at the beach house. And if she didn't return by six to, to call the police. You stated that you heard Mr. Demiris say on the telephone that he was going to meet at the beach house. Yes, sir. Uh, Andreas, is it? That's right, sir. Tell me, isn't it a little, shall we say, unprofessional to listen in on conversations between your employers? Well, I, I, I Where actually... Where were you on an extension? Certainly not. Then how else could you have heard Mr. Demiri say that he wanted to meet at the beach house? I was serving Madame T when she was on the telephone. Ah, so you did not hear Mr. Demiris's voice at the other end of the line. Well, no, not exactly. But she said... Just keep to the question, please. Mrs. Demiris could have been talking to herself, could she not? Why would she do that? Why would she hold an intimate and obviously personal conversation in front of a servant? Surely a person of her obvious breeding would have dismissed you from the room first. <laughs> Nothing further. <laughs> on trial for murder. There's just no escaping that man. But he's in jail, Catherine. He can't hurt you any longer. I'm frightened, Alan. Costa's reach went from Athens to Amsterdam. Venice is no different. When he wants to, he'll find me. Catherine, don't. You can't spend your whole life looking over your shoulder. Then how should I spend it, Alan? As my wife. You managed to discredit everyone so far. I said I would save you, Costa. However, tomorrow Spiros takes the stand. He will swear blind that I wasn't with him the afternoon Melina died. No, he won't. Don't be ridiculous. He'll never say the truth. It will ruin their case. He will do it for a price. What price? Your entire fortune, your ships, your companies, everything you own. You're mad. I'd rather die. No, you won't. Not you, Costa. What do you get out of this, Leon? I get it all. Just before you turn over the Hellenic Trade Corporation to Spiros, you transfer all its assets to a new company. Mine. So Lambro gets nothing? Yes. If I sign everything over to you, what's to stop you from double-crossing me? Yes. I've been known to do that in the past, haven't I? To do what? Pretend to do deals in order to convict innocent people. How can I be sure you won't do this again? Well, first up, it just looks as though you were going to have to trust me.
Call Mr. Spiro Swambro. The Honourable Justices, I would like to make a statement. Very well. Under oath, I swear, at the time of my sister's death, Constantine the Miris was with me 200 kilometers from the scene of the crime. Spira's face when he checks the net worth of the Hellenic Trade Corporation. <laughs> you won in the end, Costa. <laughs> I always do, Leon. Where are we going? I have a small place in the mountains. I thought we might celebrate with a little champagne. Leon, slow down. I don't think so, Costa. You know, I've only stayed alive this long because of you. And I've decided that we're going to end life together. You're crazy. You don't want to die. You're a rich man. Rich? What would a man with this body and this face want with money? Don't worry, the sisters at the convent will put it to good use. What are you doing? What is it you want? Justice, Costa! For both of us. Stop! Stop the car! It's no use! Stop me! Shipping magnate Constantine Demiris was killed late yesterday in an automobile crash. Alan? Just hours before, Demiris had been found innocent the murder of his wife in a highly publicized court case. Demiris' attorney, Napoleon Chotis, was believed to be driving the car when it went out of control. Both men are thought to have died instantly. Oh my God, poor Costa. In an automobile crash. No one deserves to end that way. The mirrors did. The Carmelite convent at Ionino was bequeathed a portfolio of stocks and bonds valued in excess of $2.2 billion. The unexpected donation was a gift from Napoleon Chotas and included property owned until recently by Constantine Demiris. You don't ever have to be afraid again. Promise? I promise. 